What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna get into these pit bikes over here. They're actually trail bikes and mini bikes or whatever you wanna call them, but we use them for racing and we always take them to the track with us and especially the little black one, it's, it's tiny, it fits well. And I see a lot of people put the bigger motors on those and that motor has done great. We've had these things for years, bought them for the kids a long time ago. Now the bigger one over here, it's a, uh, I think it's got like a 212 motor on it or whatever. It's like a six and a half horsepower and it's fun but when we went riding a few years ago i don't really remember what happened to it but i know it started spitting smoking whatever and i know the throttle hung on it one time it uh when we first got it my wife wrecked it because it that, that wasn't very good but uh, that's a whole nother story but let's get into this and we will see if we can fix it let's get it Try to go for a test drive and see if it don't die then come back and see what we figure out all right so that massive clip that you saw me there with the old big beard and all that stuff of course that was the other day but uh i got on this thing and we crunk it up it was spitting oil everywhere smoking like a tar kettle and it drove around it went and i don't know how much oil is left in the motor but i had this happen to a generator one time and it was just pouring oil out the exhaust and I have no clue what was going on with it. I think we're just gonna pull this out and put one of the Harbor Freight Predator motors in here. It should fit nice. If not, it's only, it's, I mean, it's, it'll look identical. We'll take this clutch setup and everything from here, put on it, which it has one on it because we had it in another go-kart. But I'd rather use what came with it. That way everything matches up, I guess. I don't know. It, it really doesn't matter. You can do a bunch of custom stuff. I got some out with those over there. People put the big 212cc Predators, the six and a half horsepower in those. And that's like a little 80cc. I'm sure that thing does amazing things with the big motors in it. It'd probably be scary. I'm going to get one of them to run me down the uh, motor here in just a second. We're going to go ahead and I'm probably going to pull this. It's a mess. Everywhere's freaking vehicles. I'm going to move it over there into the shade and start working on it. And we'll start tearing this thing down. We'll get it going. I wanted to show you it running, but it's spinning it out because I didn't know it was actually spitting oil out the other day. But it's all right. It's it's broken. I don't know what from. Maybe we'll tear it down to figure it out. But hey, them Harbor Freight motors are cheap. If you get a super coupon, you get them for like 99 bucks. I know the inflation went up, so maybe 119 or something. I don't know. I don't even know how much they are right now, but I know they're around 100 bucks and they're cheap. Fix it. If you want to buy a cheap trail bike or use one of these for pits amazing i mean it you can't beat it I, of course i'd love to have a honda ruckus or one of those super nice scooters to get around on but between the golf cart side by side i mean we got so much stuff to carry to the track if we carry anything i'd rather just have these little pit bikes run over to the driver's meetings well under the back porch right here is going to be our uh, work zone today <laughs> so Got a breeze blowing up under here, and that way I don't have to move a bunch of stuff in the garage or the shop. This is just something to take my mind off of all the other stuff. So, now to get with it, I guess we'll start with throttle. All you gotta do right here is come take the Phillips head screws off, slide that throttle out, set it to the side. Your brake and all this stuff, you, you won't mess with none of that. It's literally only the throttle cable and your kill switch right here. The way this comes up, we'll unbolt it right here, and then we'll set this out of the way because this plugs in here, and then the other one right here goes to here, and we can just undo those two and get them out. Now, the one on, you definitely want to kill switch, but I think the one on the Predator motor actually has a button on it or something to kill it, not up there, and you can wire it in. I, I, I'm saying all this stuff, and I ain't even looked at it. I need to look at it first because I, I cannot remember because... We had it on the uh, go-kart frame that I have over there. But we'll start with our chain area. I'll show you that in a minute. And then we have our bolts right here. I think there's four bolts that hold this bad boy on. It's not, not nothing crazy. And then 
right there it has another bolt it's four bolts for the motor one right here for the uh, the chain clutch thingy little bobber and uh to get into that we're gonna pull these two clips off let this drop down and that will show everything in here and once we loosen the motor slide it back we can take the chain off and hey this ain't gonna take too long all right so i pulled these two out right here no i mean super easy to get into you definitely want your chain guard and that is what i'm worried about on the other motor i want something that we're not going to have to worry about and i think when we take this whole mechanism off it should all bolt right back up in a decent way and by god we're going to try to get it all up in there anyways because uh we don't want nobody's uh leg getting chewed up on that and trust me it does happen all right so that's simple we just got four clips right here bam 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 that takes your plastic cover off you do not want this chewing into your leg so i hope we're gonna be able to get all this stuff back on when we put it on the other motor so when i said these predator motors are exactly the same they 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 aren't exactly the same but they are scary similar so if you look right here how the plate and all this stuff goes on here you see all these bolt holes in here inside there right here look at here bam bam that one's not used, but it's in the same spot right here. The way these go in, that goes under there. Same thing over here. It would go under here. Now, the oil checker or filler is here and here. They do it in two different spots. I took all this stuff off because we were doing a custom setup. We were mocking up for a four-wheeler that we were building. And uh, we got about halfway through that project, and my son was like, I thought it would just bolt in. I was like, no, we got to custom build brackets and this and that. So after we had everything almost mocked up, he didn't want to do it no more. I was like, you've got to be kidding me. Take this off first, slide it out of the way, make sure it fits over here, and then take this clutch off so it can go on another uh, motor for another go-kart. And try to get this set up over here, and we'll be good to go. So let me go find the tools for this, and I'll let you know what we had. All right, so use a 10 millimeter on an impact, or you're gonna have to stick a screwdriver in there so that thing won't spin. Now that's free. This is gonna get to be mashed down so that can slide out, but you need to take this one off too. So we're gonna get some pliers, bend that out, slide that, and then get the uh, right size socket for that and impact it out. Well, that was scary. I took the cotter pin out, which I broke it, of course. You know, they, they, they bend all the way around. And I went to get the correct size tool. I, I was gonna mock it up with a uh, one of these that has a... Uh, the sizes on it and then i just touched it and it started moving and i was like oh my goodness so it literally is like up against it and it uses the carter pin to hold it on and uh that just made me feel real real uneasy so keep everything in order do not lose anything keep everything where it needs to go this is going to slide forward now and i need both hands because i'm going to slide these off at the same time I'm gonna lay them out and then put the bolts back in them. I got one bolt and one nut, so I don't want it to go anywhere. And then we'll go to the next part. I see these mechanisms on eBay for like, they used to be 60 bucks and now they're up to like, I don't know, I've seen them as low as 45 for the whole unit. But for all, for the, I don't know what this clutch thing is called, whatever it's called. Anyways, these units are, used to be cheap. Now they're pretty high. So 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter. And then on the back back there, I assume it's a 10 millimeter on the other side. I'm not sure. I'm going to start with the one back there, get it loose, take these off, and then this whole unit's going to slide forward. All right, super simple. One, two, three, four. Those raw 10 millimeters. Somebody cross-threaded this in at the factory, Coleman. They did not do a good job. Uh, that's a 10 millimeter bolt with a what would be an 8 millimeter bolt thread side i don't know if i'm gonna have that back there it may be different there ain't no telling because chinese japanese american all mixed together on this so any which way there's one on the back side back there that was holding this spindle shaft thingy back there and it was right here nut and bolt so what i can do since this nut is the same size as this i'll just put it back in here on the new motor and then I will find me a new nut and bolt to hold this to the back because it don't matter back there. So now I'm gonna take this, the whole thing's coming off. I'm gonna slide it back, drop it through, lay it down, put everything back in order. Don't lose that. Right, next step, 
I unplugged the kill switch from there. And then the grounded out one is on the block. So we're gonna take this right here, like that. Take this nut off of here. That way the kill switch is done. I'm gonna put the nut back on this motor and then we'll compare when we get the other motor in here. Like I said, the other motor has a kill switch on it, but I want to move it up to the button. So we're gonna put that back right there. Okay, well, we'll just throw it in the floor. I might have to take my gloves off, but look, slide this out of the way, put it down here. That way it's just out of your way. Now, we got all this chain stuff off, all that's in order so it can go back on the new motor. We're going, we got the kill switch off. Now let's go to the other side. We're gonna take the throttle off. Once the throttle comes off, we got four bolts left on the bottom of this and that's it. Take that sucker out and uh, let's see what we got going on over here. That zip tie there comes here. We got two Phillips head screws and that's it. So we got the main clamping one over there that looks like it's halfway uh, stripped already. And then the one that is holding the clamp in place where the slack's there. So, any which way. Fill the screwdriver, take those two off. We're going to take them and lay it out of the way over here. All right, let me show you this real quick right here. I had to take the breather top off. I set it down over there. You got to take a 10 millimeter wrench right there to that Phillips head screwdriver. So, I had to hold the wrench as I was taking this out because it just spins because the way that your uh, throttle moves when you rev it up like it ain't gonna do it now because i've already made it loose but you see it trying to come oh well, see it just fell out but you got to get that loose like that that way it can slide out if not that thing will just roll on you every which way you try to do it so two-part deal on that oh my gosh we're getting showered by wood freaking bees up there i gotta finish this thing and spray because i'm so tired of the bees but that's how that one is. So now throttles out. We're going to set it out of the way. And let me see what the four bolts are on the bottom. Fun fact right here on these Coleman trail bikes. You know, these things, they're not cheap. They're like 600 bucks, I think, somewhere around there. If you ever want to know the date on these things, look back here. There should be a VIN tag. If you buy one of these and this tag's missing, eh, you know, maybe stolen, maybe whatever. I don't know, but actually has the date on it. See right there, this one was made in 2016, uh, 6-30-2016. I know it's hard to see that right there, but there we go, 6-30-2016. So, so you can tell how old they are. And I'm really not sure, this thing will clean up now, it looks brand new, it's just been sitting down there under the other uh, shedded area. And man, kinda miss this thing, cause we all had fun on this one, but. Let me go on over here, take these four bolts off on the bottom, and we're ready to take the motor out. All right, this bad boy's moving right along. Here we go with the uh, big 10 millimeter head bolts, or small 10 millimeter head bolts with a thick shaft. I think that would be a 12 if, uh, if that's metric. I hadn't really checked it yet. But any which way, motor is out. This thing was slid almost all the way up, had a little bit of adjustment room left. Plenty of adjustment for different style motors. Now, I'm in a pickle right now because I don't know if I want to use that motor because it's already set up for a go-kart. And I don't know how easy it's going to be to get this off. Uh, it shouldn't be bad because it has a shaft that is in great where I can take my, my uh, ring. Oh my gosh, I just had a brain fart. I get those, spread that open, slide it off. It should be fine. Uh, it should have like a, a key in there and like that other parts on the, that's on the clutch right there. You know, once it starts moving, it engages and it should have the Carter key in there holding that on. But that clip will come off. That will slide out. Uh, I can do that or just run to Harbor Fate and buy another brand new one for like 119 bucks. I'm just going to look it up right now to see how much they are because uh, that sounded more like a winner. That way I don't even have to mess with it. And as, as everything's in a clear, I think all this would bolt right up with no problem. And I ain't got to mess with nothing. So let me look online real quick and get back with you.
Now, the reason I'm considering doing that is because this motor over here would actually work better in the other go-kart that we have. We got a Coyote full, it used to be a shifter cart. Then they went to another class and it's got some big motor on it now and State Trooper clocked him at 122 miles an hour on the road, which is wicked. And it's a real big motor that we do not need in it. And uh, I just want something that we can all have fun with driving up and down around the area here. Uh, they do have dirt track racing that we could do with the six and a half horsepower motor if we stick one in it. But I don't know. Any which way. So I'm thinking about going to buy a new one to throw in here. That way I can leave that one apart because we would use the gas tank and everything else from the other motor and the exhaust from the other another motor for a cart that we have instead of using what we got. So let me look at the price and we'll think on that for a minute. We I think we're just gonna stick with what we got. They have no coupons for them right now and they're back up to a hundred and fifty something bucks and that's for the six and a half horsepower. For the three horsepower, 80 cc, 89 cc, whatever they are for the little one over there, which I'd have put a big one in it for the next time anyways. They're um, 129 and for the big one, the eight horsepower that you can put on these, they're 299 And we are not going any which way on those. So we're gonna use what we got. And if somehow something messes up, We'll, we'll go get the $150 one, but this one will be fine. So, I just got to put it back together. I wasn't feeling that. So, any which way. Let's get started. Old motor is out, and now we're going to set this new one on. But first, I got to get this clutch assembly mechanism thing off. So, got the snap ring off. I used these. Weren't really supposed to, but hey, I started it, grabbed it, pulled it on off. This won't come off, and I'm like, oh my goodness, because you have to pull this off the clutch brake drum thing, whatever it's called, and it's got other stuff in it. So, set it to the side. Don't lose your snap ring. And then this is on not with a uh, Woodruff key like I thought. It is on with actually Allen heads down in there. So, I got to take each one off, spin it off, and then I'll slide it out, and then... We can put it on. First, I'm going to test fit that thing up against this to make sure it's not going to hit anything because I do want to make, I, I don't want to do all that work for nothing. I guess I could put this back on by a longer chain and have it just work off that drive. And it's off. And I was right the first time. It had a little Woodruff key in there. I don't know if you can see through there. Yep. And it slid right on there, and that's how I kept it in place. So now, we don't want to lose those Allen bolts in there because that's what kept it locked in up on this. So we're going to slide that there. Put that back on there. Snap ring there because we want to take that and move it to another um, motor for something. So if it's going to take that, set it over here, see if we got a bolt up match, and keep on rolling. Alrighty, I got the bolts to line up. Look at there. Bam, looks good, right? All lined up well. Let me tell you, I didn't even have to get a hammer. I just used this thing. If you use a Harbor Freight motor, it ain't gonna sell clearance. You're gonna have to clearance it. So, you see how I beat the crap out of this uh, thingamabobber here, right here? That heat shield? Yeah. So, that hits it. You gotta beat the mess out of it to get up in there. The reason I figured that out is because I looked on the old one and I said, oh, it's got a got a hump on it. And uh, that one didn't have a hump on it. So I, I, I made it, I made it have a hump. So now that that fits, we can slide that on, put it inside there, put that back on it, get the mechanism rolling, and then uh, keep on going. It's working great so far. All right, for you guys that are just throwing a motor on one of these frames, say if you bought one of these frames at Trade Day or off Facebook Marketplace, whatever, for 100 200 bucks, and you were going to put a motor on it, it'd be fine just to throw everything Harbor Freight on there. No big deal. Now, what I'm doing, I'm going to probably take that bigger gas tank over there and see if it will fit. Um, the way that this breather is on these, it... it it pops off that one screws on I, I like how that one is better will it fit i don't know everything is so close i mean it looks so similar it is it's scary it is scary similar but i know it, i know everything did fine and i 
I just don't know if everything's going to line up with that one on here. I'm probably going to have to put this back on, but if I put this back on, I assume the gas tank will fit, but the way that that gas tank is on the Harbor Freight one, it has a breather on it, and it pulls back through for the carburetor for like a recirculatory California emission whatever thing. This one don't. So, if it does, it's under there somewhere, and I don't, I don't see it, so... I guess I am going to have to go back with that tank over there and everything. And that's fine. Perfectly fine. No big deal. All right. So, right now, I'm running into two different problems with this Predator motor. First problem is gas tank fill is right here. So, that's a pain in the butt. And second problem is the bolts that go to this mechanism are a different size. I started that one right there. See how shiny it is? It started making it bigger. I was like, whoa. So it's not a six millimeter regular one like you would use for uh, most Hondas, cars, these little motors, whatever. And it's not the big ones like that. So I gotta go see what size it actually is because I don't want to tear it up. Huh. I can retap it to those size, but I don't, I don't want to. Uh, and I didn't have to clearance that as much as I did after looking at it, but Still need to be clearance a little. So I'm just gonna put the exhaust back on. I got the gas tank on. You can use this gas tank right here. It should be the same. As a matter of fact, I'm probably fixing to change it. Um, it is really, really similar. How all that goes right up in there. And the, how it drains out into there. But uh, that would put this on the side. Be a lot easier and kill switch. I went on and put the bolt over here to the ground, and then like this is gonna be the kill switch that we use for right now, And but then I gotta figure out which one of these. I think it's gonna go into the yellow one, and that will be the kill switch for up here. So it'll be a quick, so I'll have to reach down here and do that if something's happening in a hurry. But this is that California emission one. Like if you go to Harbor Freight and you look under their website, and it shows the EVA, I don't even know what it's called, but that's what this is. It's the breather that goes into the, uh, out of the gas tank, gives it a vent, and it pulls in. And then it actually goes into the uh, intake, not intake, uh, bow cover. And that's the breather port for there, which that's fine, but it's mainly this one. It's the vent in the gas tank, which this one does not have. And that's the problem with that, so... The pull handle is on the opposite side. The tank things on the opposite side. And you can change them around. You know, no big deal. Or you can hang your own custom gas tank over here. Well, however you want to do it. There's a million different ways. But uh, that's the two main things so far. But right now, I've got everything hooked up. And it's in place. I just ran the bolts up because i got to adjust it in a minute. Because i got to find the other bolts to put the uh, gear stuff back on. But all this is back together. I'm going to go ahead and put some fuel in here because I want to crank this up. I just got the throttle hooked up. So now it's working. All that was the same. Uh, same with the nut and the screw, just like on this one with the nut and the screw. And then everything should work fine. I'm just going to crank it up, make sure it does have oil. Make sure y'all have put oil in y'all's. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and crank it, make sure it's going to do well because uh, it has been sitting for a while. And then I will go find the correct bolts to put the drive line stuff on. And we can go ride this thing. Well, it's not really no big deal <clears throat> with the uh, gas tank right there. I mean, you can go right through the bars, no big deal. Or you can use the funnel if you want to. Not too bad. And that will come forward a little bit. I haven't adjusted it yet. So, all the linkage is hooked up. The ground for the kill switch is hooked up. I still haven't mess with it yet because i'm just gonna use the one on the motor for right now uh everything else is hooked back up because i had it off doing a four-wheeler so now the only thing left i'm gonna go ahead and check it and make sure that it runs good because like i said it's been apart for a while and if i need to clean a carburetor or do whatever i want to do it now before i get everything back together or if something stupid starts leaking or happening and after that i am tapping these out right here now they're starting to fit. Uh, I'm using a, a grade eight, one of these hard steel bolts from a uh, from the frame on a Civic, I believe. That's what I'm using to tap that in. If I'd have thought about it, 
the casing looks just like, and the same bolts and everything as the old casing from the other motor, same thickness and everything. I think I could have just took that. Now, see, I don't know about the seal. I don't know about the inner shaft. I know the outer shaft is the same because that one fits and that one fits good. I already tested that. And the bolt from the inside of that fits there good. That's what's so weird. Those are the only bolts that have been different so far on the main thing that we hooked this to. So it, it, it's blowing my mind. So anyways, way, if it's going to crank it up, make sure that it runs, and then I will continue tapping that, and that way the old bolts will fit in there, and then we can just keep on rolling, and hopefully be riding here in just a few minutes. All right, let's put the cap back on. Now, I did not get very much gas in there, unfortunately. <laughs> we had to go cut two grass yesterday, and, uh, well, needless to say, there wasn't much in here. I hope it got enough to the reserve area to get down in there. Throttle's working good. Gotta check this kill switch, make sure it's on. Yep. We're gonna push this to choke and then put the fuel on. And all right, let's see what happens. I may not have enough gas. It's been a minute. I got some starting fluid right here. Let's see if that will do it. Yeah, we ain't got enough gas. Let's put the filter back on. some gas it runs so that's good now uh i'll re i'll finish tapping that stuff get some gas we'll go for a ride it's probably using the engine that's been setting up for a while i went through i sucked the gas out of here because i didn't have hardly any in there and i'm not getting any gas into the bowl so it fires right up when i spray the starting fluid in there Bowls dry. That's old grossness from the old stuff. I should have blew this hose out when I had it apart earlier. I knew I should. I had that feeling right after I plugged it up and got the uh, gas tank bolted up. I said, you know what? Why did you not do that? Because I had the carburetor off and everything. So now I got to backtrack and do that. So once I do that and then it can flow into it, then it'll run. So then, uh, then I'll get back to tapping the screws over there and putting the actual drive line on. All right, so I had to slide that off, and I'm, it, that is not clogged up going from the gas tank <clears throat> to there. So we're letting that drain back into the gas can, and it's it's a little dirty up in here. So I'm just gonna spray some more, clean this, and somewhere or another, which is gross in there as well. I'm going to have to back this out because this is not draining down into here. So we're not, it's not letting the gas go down into the uh, fill bowl. So I cleaned the fill bowl out. It didn't look too horrible, but there's a few spots that's gummy on here. So we're gonna go ahead and clean this out and get it ready. And then I'll spray some stuff down in that hole. See which hole it comes out once it blasts out and it's free. And I'll put it back together. Right Tighten down the motor. I got it running. Got everything cleared up. It needs gas, so it's so low on gas. But it is working on its own. No spray, no nothing. I had to clean out that uh, part where it was going to into the carburetor. I had to clean the whole part. It has been sitting a long time. But it works. I gotta go pick up the kids from school. I'm gonna get some gas. I think the more that it runs, the better it'll do. I need to adjust the idle screw. I guess it's a little different in here with the throttle. I don't know. It is what it is. And then I need to clean all this mess up right here because we don't want gas going everywhere. What the crap? Yeah. Don't want that catching on fire with the exhaust. We'll get that cleaned up, finish tapping these out and get everything together. All right, we got all this back together now. Almost back together. Got these all retapped, and I use that really good steel, milled steel 
grade A, whatever. I don't know what it was. It was a good bolt. And uh, re-threaded, tapped all these. It started off small and went into the thread size that I needed, so it worked out perfect. Worked it in, cleaned it out, worked it in, cleaned it out, worked it in. Worked great. Uh, now I got all these. I did end up with three 10 millimeter head ones with the eight millimeter size bolt. And then this was the one that I used to tap with. And I didn't have another one of these. And they were, they look really good in there. But hey, you can see them anyways. But it's on there good and tight. That one back there that I put back in lined it up straight how it needs to be. <clears throat> now we just need to worry about forward and backwards. So next step is to put this and that back on. And we'll slide that right in. And then we'll slide the whole motor forward to get the uh, slack out of it. So let me do that. And we will lock this sucker down and try to go for a ride. The motor, y'all heard it a while ago. I barely cleaned the carburetor out a while ago and it because it wasn't getting any going down. So I was like, man. And uh, so any which way. Uh, it is filling the bowl up now. It's just not running great. So, hey, that uh, $150 motor I didn't want to pay for may be getting paid for tomorrow and uh, throw in here because I need this thing to work great for while we're at the tracks, not just, you don't want to be sounding goofy and crappy at the track. Everybody be making fun of you sitting there going, rah, rah, and crap falling apart than if you don't make it back to your pits. And it's a long ride. You, you got to make it back. So, any which way. Uh, let me get this together and see what it does. Okay, so it's still got the. Uh, uh, it, it, it cranks or, or it cranks better now, but I don't like how that does. Once it gets adjusted, I don't know. I'm gonna drive for a little bit, see if it just needs to clean itself out since it's been sitting. Well, there you go. So, uh, any which way, it's ready to test drive. Got everything together. Like I said, with the Predator, hey, not that bad the gas tank sucks being right there and it already has a kill switch but i want to move it to where it's right here and then having to drill out these holes not drill them out but retap them so uh that's the only thing bolts right up no problem but uh <laughs> y'all be better with a new motor but this one's used and is what it is but let me grab i don't know I might try to adjust it in a second. I'm gonna go ahead and try to crank it again. I wanna go for a ride on this thing and see how it's gonna do. So, uh, I don't know if I can video and drive at the same time. So, may end up getting the bigger kid to ride. Okay, this is definitely gonna be crappy ride quality, but you know what? It worked. I went around one time and uh, it's getting better. See how it's getting faster? It will eventually stop, I hope, and start purring like it's supposed to, but let's try it. See, there it goes. There we go, let's see. We'll do it on a brake can. Who needs brakes, right? Uh, let's go to the side. I would just drive with one hand and no brakes. If I had to drive my phone, y'all know I had to grab the brakes. Yes, we're on the golf course. They're changing hands right now. They ain't cut it this year yet. They need to come on. make sure I didn't lose nothing out of my pockets over there. That was, uh, I ain't gonna lie, that was kind of scary. All right, now, I totally should have put the uh, safety thing back on here. Now, I spilled a bunch of gas earlier. As you can see, it's smoking right there. Well, maybe you can't see it smoking. It is smoking, and it stinks. Hope it don't catch on fire. Uh, also, 
Let's see. Yeah, that thing, I should have put the safety thing on because by God, it got my ankle when I hit that bump. Let me go do that now and uh, that way to wrap this thing up. One more thing before I put that on. This right here, so there's my new cotter pin. I put it in there and I did it like that so it could really hold in there good and uh, locked it back around into those little spaces there. Well, the reason that thing was finger loose earlier when I was taking it off if you try to tighten that on down, you can't get to the next one to where you could put it in the hole. That's why it was like it is. So, it's scary thinking about it, I guess, but it works. Cotter pin does its job. You just keep an eye on it. Do a check on it ever so often. Well, there's a leaf on that exhaust right there. It's definitely gonna burn. I ain't putting my fingers on there and put my big rubber gloves on first before I do that. But let me throw this on right here. All right, it is on, all the safety things on. Now I won't cut my leg and my ankle open and all that good stuff or mess me up. So all done. And here's a recap. Predator motor from Harbor Freight. All right, so here's a recap of the bike. It's a Coleman CC200 trail bike, 2016 model. Motor blew up. You can find these cheap and because they're about 600 bucks so find one cheap with a wall motor throw you a 150 dollar predator in it and get it rolling use these as pit bikes trail bikes whatever you want they're all fun for all types of things very useful uh predator motor harbor freight 150 bucks get you a super coupon get it a little bit cheaper uh everything fits great everything goes in right uh except this this is on the wrong side you can use a funnel or just come from the other side and ease up in there and don't spill it everywhere like i did the first time and kill switch is already on the motor or you can wire this one in from up here i've already grounded the ground from up there and then i'm going to tap it into this wire right here so either have a double kill single kill whatever who knows i'll do that another day right now i'm just going to go Foop. i wanted it done up there but man yeah so apparently it looks like there was a zip tie right here to hold this up I had to get another one. I might have snapped it off when I slid that other motor around, or the kids slid the motor around. Who knows, you know? Any which way. So, all this stuff is good to go over here. Throttle cable worked in there great. Had all the correct stuff already. It went right on. If you don't have uh, the throttle cable from one of these, or you're putting it in, whatever, make sure you find a spring to put in there. That way it'll hold on tight. That way when you pull it, it'll release it back. That way your throttle don't get stuck because they do get stuck. All right, onto this side. Exhaust fits good. Your four bolts on the bottom fit good. Uh, the bracket, uh, your clutch mechanism stuff that was on the other one went right on here in place, helped wind up the motor. But the four main bolts that go to it were a different size on this one. If you guys have one with the motor, some of them may not have a motor. If they don't, don't matter. If you need to buy one of these kits, they have them on eBay. They're sixty to a hundred dollars, so that uh, it's not too bad. But if you're using the same motor and going to a Predator, uh, you've got to tap those four out. Everything else is the same. Shaft same size. Um, everything else worked perfect. I did clearance that a little bit right there. I didn't have to clearance it that much for the heat shield, but it is what it is. Overall, I can't complain pretty straightforward job it took me all day to do because i had to redo the carburetor and all that other stuff and apparently i didn't do a great job because uh i ran out of part brake parts cleaner and carburetor cleaner there was about two more spots that i really needed to get up in there but i got the float clean got all that other stuff it's running it's working it's getting better so that's all that matters main thing was it wasn't getting no fuel to it because it was clogged up but it's doing that now so now we're ready to go rock and roll with this thing but Hope that helped y'all. Hope hope y'all learned something from it. And this is a good motor. I, pu I put these motors in a lot of stuff. And uh, later on, in a couple months, I'm probably gonna do one in a golf cart. I see a lot of people do that. And I spent $660 on golf cart batteries. Turned around and my motor went out in that thing on the electric one. And I have another electric one that I run car batteries off of. I don't buy them golf cart batteries no more. They're too expensive. And I'm running three car batteries for $79 with warranty at Walmart. And I can go replace them at the end of the year if something's wrong. But, uh, or you can pay $20 more per battery and get one for two years. But that's a whole other story. But uh, we're going to pretend that I cleaned this thing up. We're going to 
pan around it and make it look like it's all shiny and pretty and playing music that I don't know how to edit all in and that's it. But hit that subscribe button, give a comment, like, all that good stuff, and we'll see you next time. Down, 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 that's a pretty mini bike I did good, yeah. So I actually did wash it. I came around here, got it going. Um, a couple things that I do want to show you on serious note on these. Uh, I saw them at the VIN number on the back back here. Uh, there's another VIN right there stamped into the frame. And, but for safety point, make sure you go back and you tighten your wheels, your steering, check your brake cables, everything else because you put a kit on here these things can go pretty fast especially depending on what sprocket you run this that and everything else and it's dangerous really fast these wheels will vibrate loose the wheels brakes they have to be adjusted the this thing right here this bolt will come loose because you're hitting bumps constantly boom 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 this and then there's a nut that connects to it right there it vibrates loose and you have to tighten it and you tighten it too much it gets kind of stiff and that's how i like it anyways on there but uh if you if you leave it loose it's going to loosen faster even though it has a lock nut on it they wear out i mean can't help it you, you're beating the crap out of it through the woods and uh jumping stuff and being dumb because that's that's what i do and uh well, that's what the kids do i i don't jump nothing no more my back can't take it but any which way these things are great but be sure you go back check your adjust your linkage down here for the brakes your bolts for your wheels and uh make sure nothing is going to do anything bad and just just give it a once over but hey safety first especially when it comes to kids me third fourth you know it is what it is but most people know what to look for you know if something's happening but kids don't they are wide open night and nothing so Anyways, I thought I'd add that in there. See ya.